So in today's video we're going to take a look at how to go about creating a helix form in Revit using stairs. Now uh, the form that we see here in front of us was created using this technique. Uh, so let's uh, start off with a blank template and see how it works. From the architecture ribbon select stairs. Uh, in your properties we're going to select the assembled stair. Uh, for this exercise, what we do want is a stair that has a stringer. So it may not have, it doesn't necessarily have to be an assembled stair, but a stair with a stringer is what we're after. We're going to duplicate this and call this helix stairs. Uh, we're going to turn off the left support. The reason for this is just to make it a little bit easier to select the only path that we're after, which will be in this case the right support. And we'll click OK. The location line we want is run right. By default this is set to run center, but for an accurate internal radius we're going to go with run right. We're going to select the full step spiral stairs. Change your top level to none. And the desired stair height for this example will go with 3000. When you click, you'll get a radius from the center to the inside face of the stair stringer. So if you were to align with align this with a wall form, for example, you would want to align the inside face. So we're going to go with a radius of 1500 mils and click finish. We'll delete our railings for the moment. Once you've created your stair, you can make adjustments parametrically using the desired stair height values and the desired number of rises. So in this case, if we want to increase the number of loops our helix makes, we'll select our stair and change the relative top height to 6000. If we want to squash our helix, then we increase the number of desired uh, rises. So in this case we'll go with 50. And you can see that it squashes our helix. Again we can change the desired stair height to 6000. So we'll select relative top height to 6000. And again, we can select our stairs and we can say the desired number of rises will reduce to 30, which will open up our design. So for this example, we'll uh, bring the relative top height back down to 6,000. And we'll click finish. We'll go to the model in place. Generic models. We're going to use a sweep and we're going to use the pick path method. We're going to select the inside face of our stringer and click finish. You can now draw a desired profile. Uh, in this case I'm going to select one I created a little earlier. And click finish can hide our stairs once we're finished and we have our form. The great thing about the pick path method is that if you update your stairs, so if we were to increase the desired number of rises to make this a flatter design, our profile moves with it. Okay. If we were to increase the number of spirals in this, we would need to add additional path. The other method is by using a railing. So we'll place a railing on our host. We're going to delete the left side railing and just leave the right. We'll uh, 
adjust the relative top height so we'll make this spin a little bit more so relative top height will change to 6000 click finish and you can see the great thing about this method is that the railing follows the length of the stair okay select a railing structure with the form that you want so I'm going to go with a helix spine form that I used a little earlier I'll flip that profile and I'll hide the stairs and you can see here it's the same form but using a railing structure the difference is though that when rivet the railing structures gives a faceted edge to curved and spline forms so this might be a deciding factor when determining whether or not to use a sweep or a railing for this process you can select your form and if you have multiple railing structures or forms that you want to try then you can easily switch them we can turn on our stairs and I'm just going to increase sorry decrease the number of rises to open up our railing structure to create a double helix simply select your stairs go to top view and we're going to rotate with a copy 180 degrees and here we have our double helix we'll uh, have a look at a couple of examples I created a little earlier so there was a tower that we used with a sweep that was on a pick path you can use a blend so in this case we use a swept blend potential to create a ramp so if we turn our stairs back on for this example we can select the stair increase the number of steps select our stair reduce the relative top height So this method here was using a profile with a railing. And finally to create this windmill structure, I've used the same method. Three fins rotated 120 degrees around the axis and it's all been created in an in-place family. So you could take the next step by selecting this in place family, copying the geometry and placing it in a work plane based family or a face based family which would allow you to place your helix or spirals in a uh, horizontal placement or as well as vertical. So that's how I go about creating my helix forms in Rivet and I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.